Oh, that's better. So good evening, everyone. My name is Christine Bibbeck, and I'm sitting in tonight for Paul Keenan, who couldn't be with us because he's on another webinar tonight. And I'm hoping you can see my screen. Um, John, are you able to see it? Uh, yes, I can see the screen. Great. Um, so as you can see, tonight's topic is FRC Cheat Sheet. So it's tips for teams. And we have with us tonight our special guest. John Hobbins, who is the director for FIRST Robotics Canada, so looking after all those teams here in Ontario and helping out across the, the whole country. So John, tonight you want to share with us some tips that you've gathered, um, and I know I'm anxious to hear about them, so we'll start off with our first slide here. Um, how to play the game. So. Um, do you, want to, do you want me to read these points or would you like to comment on them? I should also add that John is traveling with us because he was visiting teams and school boards today in the Windsor area. So he's currently traveling by train. So his internet might be spotty. So um, if we lose him, we'll know what's going on. Okay, so John, how to play the game. I'll start by reading the points. <laughs> um, ramps and climbing on robots. So we've got a few points here. Um, it's hard for the driver to see the robot when you want. Um, and do you want to comment on that, John? Yes. Uh, hi, Chris. I can't hear you very well. Can you um, try your volume? Calling through. Yeah, it's almost impossible to hear you. It's like a whisper. I could hear you before, um, but n has something changed? Have you? Um... Hmm. How about now? I still can't hear you very loud. It's like a whisper. I will go ahead and read through these um, these points, um, and you can maybe see if you can readjust your audio. We okay, could so I have my headphones oh, on. Now. That's better. Great. Perfect. Okay, good. Perfect. Okay, are you on which slide are you? We're on ramps and climbing robots. Excellent. So, yeah, I'd like to comment on this. And I've heard from quite a few teams from across the province to give me some idea of what are the key points to express to the audience. The some of the things to consider, teams have heard that in the past we had ramps that robots could drive on, for example, trying to climb on top of another robot to get those bonus points. But it's way harder than um, teams think it is. And here's some of the key uh, points with that. Um, how does the driver, if the driver is blocked or the yeah, view is blocked, yeah, how can they see how to line up their robot to be, to be able to climb up on top of the other robot, for one example. Another one is that that robot is typically almost the same size, so they'd have to be perfectly lined up or very accurately lined up in front of or behind the other robot before they climb up on it. And that was one of the, the key things. So I've heard a lot of comments about, oh my gosh, let's just do what we did way back when and climb on top of the other robots. But I think you'll find that that's very difficult to do. And there's not a lot of room on that ramp in order to do that or in that platform that's there. Because once a robot is on there, you still would have to climb up that ramp and then onto another robot. Right. Was that clear, Chris? Yeah. No, that's good. Good point, John. Good. And I know that I've heard a lot of teams talking and about that idea too. So it's good for them to be aware and know exactly what they're getting into. Perfect. Okay. Um, should we go to our next slide? What to be aware of? All right. So there's quite a bit of um, points on here, things to be concerned about, to be aware of. Um, the original drawings that came from headquarters on kickoff had the hanging bars sticking out from the vertical six and a quarter inches, but the real measurement is eight and a quarter. And we were very fortunate that some teams were able to find out that uh, they weren't able to do it uh, when they were going by the six and a quarter measurement. And so they actually figured it out and informed headquarters that that measurement must be wrong. So headquarters has confirmed it's eight and a quarters out from that vertical wall. That's how much gap that that round bar is out from the wall. 
Okay, great. RNG or random number generation refers to the, yeah, it, it refers to that piece where you don't know exactly which of the um, switches will be lit up that you'll be able to score in. That's going to be somewhat random. And some people are wondering if that might be an advantage or disadvantage to certain teams. It's possibly that that could ha happen, but that is just a part of the game and we'll have to deal with it as it happens. Okay. Okay, um, again, um, you know, being aware of that point previously about um, relying on an alliance partner, if you build a ramp on your robot, uh, you're relying on the other people to be able to get up on top of your robot and that becomes very difficult to do. We had some very large ramps uh, a few years back and I can tell you that it's nowhere near as easy as you think it is. Um, and the whole idea of if once you do get up onto another robot, are you able to stay there? Is the robot able to elevate you to a point where you're 12 inches or higher off the ground? Chris, can you go back to the yeah, sorry. subsequent slide? Thank sorry, you. Sorry, I was taking yeah. notes. <laughs> okay, uh, sorry, and here we go. Back up one more, sorry. One more? I think that's the one. I think it's probably just a delay. To... There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so, and again, uh, apologies to the audience as I'm on a, a train right now trying to work through the uh, intermittent internet, I guess you could say. Um, one of the other key things is um, yeah. I'm seeing a lot of taller robots. And when you think about the gameplay, trying to lift cubes up onto the high scale, or perhaps trying to climb up that ramp, and what is your um, metric for your center of gravity? Where's the tipping point for that robot? One of the things we expect this year is that we're gonna see quite a few robots uh, on their own inadvertently uh, tipping over. So please be aware of that and um, do whatever you can design-wise to keep the weight towards the bottom. So you minimize that chance of happening if in fact you are a taller robot. And even if your robot drives um, pretty steadily without any real tip ability, uh, keep in mind that you're going up that ramp at the end. And so that would obviously cause a, a concern for tipping. One of the key things, and you'll hear more on this later, is uh, <clears throat> you know you could talk about how much can you score as a team, um, how much of a partner successful or good partner will you be for another alliance and the key thing that it seems is at the forefront this year teams strong teams knowledgeable teams are going to want to be partnered with teams that know the game and understand when to push the buttons on the vault to maximize the score so that whole piece about awareness and training it go on the robot itself please make sure that your game team fully understands. And I would go as far as practicing ahead of time, different scenarios where teams would know how to gain or maximize points early on in the match, if that's the case, where they begin to push those buttons and multiply the score. One of the things that I heard Karthik um, mention on the uh, first updates now session a couple of weeks ago was the idea that uh, scoring is not traditional. It's not like you shoot a ball through a, a hole and you get a score right off the bat, like you get five points or two points. This time, you've got to place an object and you, you hold on to it for a period of time in order to get your score. So that's really quite a bit different. It takes a lot more thought process behind. So in a way, it's a game of strategy this year to a very large degree. And Chris, a really uh, important point here about HDPE or the material that the ramp uh, has on top of it. So imagine... Lexan or plexiglass, for example. Um, I've researched this material, and one of the key descriptors of that material is it says it has a very low coefficient of friction. Huh. Basically, you can assume that it's pretty slippery. So, so are you, that are might you thinking it's going to be slipperier than yeah, a Lexan sheet, for example? Hmm. Or do you know how it compares to Lexan, just to give us an idea? Yeah, it's it's pretty much. I'm saying Lexan just because it's it's like that. But uh, anybody could research those uh, that acronym, and they'll see that it's a, a slippery material. Imagine, um, you know, like a classroom chair. That's um, that plastic material that, in itself, if you were to drag a set of keys across it, you could imagine how slippery that is. Right. Okay. Is similar to what you're going to experience when you're trying to climb the ramp. Now, what that means is, uh, it might give you some direction. 
you know, on how to design your robot on what wheel type to use. So it's not my job to tell you what wheels to use, but obviously you're not going to want to use a very hard wheel um, because that hard wheel is going to just spin on that slippery surface. Right. And um, the other piece that goes with that is the idea of, well, what size are my wheels and where do I wheels? If you have, um, um, Chris, I'm not sure if you, it, you're aware how much of the audience knows that that ramp is at least three and a half inches high. Yes, yeah, so you that mentioned means that, that last week. If your know. robot frame is sitting any lower than say, roughly, yeah, two and a half to two inches clearance, you're going to potentially have a problem of bottoming out or getting stuck up on that ramp. Plus, you, you saw your, that a few your years ago with a much well, lower right? ramp, so I would suspect that that. Exactly. Yeah, the bumper piece in itself. Okay. I think we have some lag between the two of us, but I'm sure so we'll not, we're it not out. saying that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we've lost John, so we're just going to move on to the next slide, which is overall uh, tips. Sorry, John, we're having a hard time hearing you. Eight inch wheels, there's a. I, I've heard some people comment since last webinar that, oh, we must use. Yes. Uh, boy. Yeah, John, we're, we're, we're losing you. You're cutting in and out. So could you summarize that again about the eight inch wheels? Sorry, you're if you want to use the eight inch wheels, but basically just use your wheel size to determine how much clearance you have. And that would be the correct answer. Okay, great. So we're moving on to the next slide now, which is overall tips. Uh, excellent. So obviously attending webinars, because we're going to be giving you any new information we find out, we're certainly going to share it with the audience. A lot of people have heard about the robot in three days, uh, giving some sense of ideas and tips. Now, <laughs> the one thing that I would mention about that is, sure, that 118 robot is pretty good, but what perhaps is not good about the robot, and you can find all that out by going to the Compass Alliance, which is a new consortium of strong teams that um, are putting information out there globally to try to help teams get ahead uh, in the process. And they've gone and reviewed every single one of those robots in three days and told you all the good things and the not so good things to consider when looking at those robots. So you'll, you'll know what to do if you want to look at a certain design and say, hey, maybe that's something that we can use. Great tip. All right. And the, yeah, and the last point on this is the importance of scouting. Um, it was mentioned that. Uh, Teams often think, okay, well, if you have a good autonomous or how many cubes can you score, that determines that you're the team that I want as a partner. But it's not necessarily so in this game. It's your ability to cycle is what I've heard is a common phrase from top teams that to be able to go grab a cube, move a cube to the exchanger, vice versa, take a cube from the human loader and put it into the scoring uh, to the switch or what have you. Um, so that whole idea of your repeatability and how fast you could do that is what we call a cycle. And I'll give you a good example of where that held true. 2013, when Canada won the World Championships, there were three cyclers that got together that really didn't try to hang. You know, there was a real high 50 points for hanging high. Those three did not even try to hang high. They hung at the lowest level possible, um, but they did that repeated cycle very quickly. And that was in enough to win them the world championship, even against teams that could score um, by going up and climbing up to the top of the pyramid. So a very important point for you to think about. Right. So and really, it speaks to consistency and repeatability in terms of doing uh, some of the basic elements of the game. And that's what usually leads to the type of robot that a strong team is going to want to pick as their line's partner. 
Right. I, I guess the other thing I'd like to add to that little bit, All right, too. All right, that's it for this slide. Yeah, I'd like to just add to that, John, that um, I think it's important when scouting to also note um, that there's an, a, the value of teams that maybe can slow down that cycle. Um, they might not be, you might not be seeing them scoring as high, but if there is a value in, in potentially slowing down the other alliances cycling time. Um, so that might be something you might want to consider looking at too when you're doing your scouting. And uh, I think we had skipped over the Chief Delphi point, John. Did you just want that out yeah, there? Chris, as... I would like to echo your, your statement about... Um... Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry, say it again. No, I think we're, we're just having a lot of lag between the two of us, so it's hard to communicate, but that's great. Keep going. Yeah, I, I would like to add a comment on um, what you were saying about um, uh, teams that strategize to perhaps disrupt um, fast cycling robots. That's a really important point because, and of course, it leads to that D word, the defense. When you look at... Um, uh, you know, some of the comments that I've had in conversations over the last couple of weeks, people will say, oh, well, we could, um, we, we've got protected zones where people can't hit us. And that's true. But you actually have to get to that protective zone in order to uh, be protected. And, <coughs> excuse me, because of the speed of the game and how nervous you're going to get, there's going to be times where you're going to grab a cube and you're going to want to put it up into the scale up high. Um, and you're, you feel like I'm going to save time by not going into the protected zone and uh, scoring that cube from the side, say, for example. Well, when you're doing that, then you're open, um, an open target, I guess you could say. So you're not always protected. And there's a little bit of discrepancy about what the referees will call, whether you get pushed into the zone interference or not, and whether that's a penalty or if they're going to just overlook that. Good points. Good points. Okay, um, so then overall tips, just mentioning Chief Delphi again, I guess, and uh, I, I'll just add on to that as well, that um, keep your eye out for those Friday updates. There might be some in there as well that you'll wanna um, take note of. Okay, so our next slide is best basic robot slash team attributes. Sure, so what this one, is, this is basically a, a summary that tells you if you weren't sure what to do, you, you really didn't have the the full range plan of what that robot's gonna look like exactly, and you really wanna get a robot that's gonna be successful. So when you ask what are the attributes of a successful robot in this game, and certainly one that is gonna be attractive to teams that place high, say for example. So obviously, no matter, I, I believe, and this is just my personal opinion, no matter how good your robot is, if you don't understand the game and how to play, teams are going to have a hard time choosing you for an alliance partner just because you don't know what you're doing in terms of when to push the buttons and how to score and how long to hold on to different um, scoring objects. Secondly, um, those fast cycle times that we talked about, just your ability to move around the floor fast, which would be a good example of the 118 robot and how uh, quickly they demonstrated they could move cubes around that floor. Um, very simple, getting cubes to be able to be loaded into that vault. Get that vault full and um, leverage those points that you have in there. Very simple is the autonomous to get across that line for five points. So when you think about that, if you, there, I would say on average, um, and Chris, tell me what you think about this, on average there might be 30% or more teams that don't have an autonomous. They don't move forward to go across that line. and Realistically, that's a very uh, easy code to develop. And if you are struggling with that, ask around, ask a veteran team if they could help give you a code that would get you to be able to just move forward across that line for the five points in the autonomous mode. And then, so you're able to do that. And then the last piece is at the end of the match, climbing this, the ramp, uh, Not I'm not saying hanging, I'm just saying get up that ramp so all the robots are there and you get the bonus five points across each team right so those are the basic attributes of what basically that 118 good points i really like these john they're great okay our next slide win factor yes 
yeah, so it was just a comment I heard from a few people, and this again was from uh, First Updates Now when you took a, a poll of what Karthik and uh, um, the other two um, panelists were talking about, and they were basically saying that um, the difference is going to be made between whoever owns the scale and the strength of understanding the game and how to play that game. So those are two extremely important factors for this game. And then, of course, the consistency of having that at least a robot that can be the best basic robot as described in that previous slide. Right. So know those rules. Make sure all of your um, your drive team knows those rules backwards and forwards so that they don't make any careless errors. Okay. Um, and now we've got a few remi Absolutely. reminders for you, unless you have anything else you want to add in, John, before we do the reminders. No, uh, you go ahead, Chris. Okay, and great. Maybe if we get it on it, it'd be good to look at those questions. Right. So we've got a few links here that we'd like you to have a look at. Um, so um, there's one in the Google Drive. There's also, I want to point out, the bronze safety um, quiz which has been updated for this year now so if you're students or if you are a student or even if you're a mentor I think it's a great thing to go through um, that safety quiz just to keep brushed up on those rules and then we also have the rules quiz um, which um, ties into a lot of what um, Mr. Hobbins has been saying tonight about the importance of knowing those rules. So this is a fun way and it's already done for you thanks to Paul Keenan. He's done some great work in putting these resources together and uh, they're great to help out teams and to help refresh and make sure everybody knows the ins and outs of the game this year. And then the link at the bottom here is to the online help desk, um, which Symbotics is hosting. Um, so if you have any questions at all throughout the uh, build season, or actually even competition season, I think they, they go into, don't they, John? Um, they can be addressed here. And the great um, folks at Symbotics will get back to you with an answer. And they've been very good at getting back in a timely fashion. So. Thanks again to them as well. Yeah. And Chris, um, just, a, just a comment back on that last slide. Sure. To add to that, that, that link for um, the document that we're talking about today, the, the cheat sheet, um, also loaded up to this document link here. If you go there, you'll be able to see. I also asked Karthik for his personal opinion, and he gave me um, you know, a page and a half of tips so those are uploaded in that same Google Drive, so please take advantage of that. Go in there, um, get some insights directly from the guru himself, and, and um, use that to <coughs> your best advantage as possible. And you're asking about the online help desk. It does run all the way through um, to the end of the World Championships. Great, great. No, that's perfect. And um, these are great resources. There are lots of great resources out there, um, but, you know, they're right there. Help yourself, because... They're there for the taking, so um, keep that in mind. So tonight we do have a trivia question, and if you would care to email me your answer, um, the first person that sends me um, the correct answer will win some great first swag. Um, so you can email me at christine.bibic at firstroboticscanada.org. And the question is, what is the measurement of the hanging bar? What is it supposed to be? So this is not just a hint. It's not what in, was in the game manual originally. Um, so we're looking for that updated number. If you know that number, you can email me at christine.bibic, firstroboticscanada.org, and win some great first swag. Um, I think that's all we have for tonight, right, John? Um, so we can... we've. We'll just wrap things up, I think, a few minutes early. But uh, thanks for joining us, everyone, and uh, continue to watch the rest of the series. And if you haven't seen some of the previous webinars that have been recorded, they're all on our YouTube channel, so be sure to check them out because there's some great information there. It's great to just listen in the background as your team's working away um, on your robot this year. And uh, I hope everybody's doing well. If you need any help, reach out. There's lots of resources there to help you. We've got 
senior mentors across the province um, that are there to support you. We have veteran teams that are more than willing to reach out and lend a hand. And of course, we've got our first Robotics Canada staff as well. So um, any other parting thoughts for you, from you, John, before we close off? Well, I, I think you hit the nail on the head there, the tip about reach out and ask for help. We know that that's the number one mistake or problem that teams encounter throughout the year. So um, we're here to help. Everybody wants to help. All the teams want to help each other. So don't hesitate to help. And for the uh, rookies to make sure that you stay tuned to the Rookie Google Group for the continual uploading of good resources that Mr. Keenan is putting in there. Yes. And, um, uh, Chris, maybe just the idea of the practice fields that are um, yes. uh, going to be soon available for teams. So uh, we're, we have a full field, 100% field at um, a student that's going to be um, open later this week. we got the John Polani field. I know Victoria Park is going to have a partial field. Hamilton's got a field and Team 1114 has a field amongst the other people that do too. So if you do don't know who to contact then contact Chris or myself or Paul and we'll certainly put you in touch with the right people so that you get the best benefit possible even if you don't have a robot ready I would still encourage you to try to go go to practice field um, last week at John Palani we had a robot in three days scoring cubes um, in the switch and the scale and I can tell you it's not as easy as you might think it is and so just being there Watching sort of in person. <laughs> we're, we're hearing you in a slow motion sort of. Uh... Okay, I'm just going to summarize then for John before we close off. So, a really big tip for you there. Yeah. Chris, thanks very much for. Yes, and I just want to throw out there one more time, it's like ask for help, ask for help early, because uh, it's easier to find help if you give people enough lead time, and by all means make use of those practice fields because they're so valuable, that experience. Even if you can only make it out for a few hours before bag and tag, it's well worth the effort. Um, the, the experience that your team will get. So uh, thanks again, everybody, and join us again next week. Take care.